when you look at Akamai, you folks uh, put a lot of emphasis on partner network. Uh, can you also talk about what role does Akamai's partner network play in delivering different AI capabilities, once again, regardless of where it is, at the, the, you know, centralized versus, you know, distributed, decentralized? You know, there's different levels of partnership that any business will expect their current technology partners to maintain. I mean, in the in the cloud, for example, in the centralized cloud, there are marketplaces that exist because a business might have their preferred uh, application security vendor, API security vendor. Maybe they have s different types of tooling that they rely on that their developers have become conversant in and they want to make sure that those are compatible with that sort of an environment. Where Akamai is thinking about our partnerships is we do want to be partnered closely with all of the major cloud platforms because we know that an architecture is going to span multiple clouds and different businesses have their preferred cloud vendor or vendors. And that's just a, a way of working now across the internet. We've seen a lot of news about, you know, different juggernauts in compute that are suddenly partnering and deploying one another's services on one another's clouds. And that is really a, a response to that market condition where businesses are saying, I need the flexibility to use the software or the partner that I prefer for a given area of my, my tech stack. Now, where we think about extending AI to the edge and, and satisfying some of our customers' use cases as they evolve them in the direction of you know, real-time AI processing, then we're thinking about partners like Neural Magic, who are helping us to sparsify uh, some of the models that will be applied at the edge so that we can use commodity CPU resources instead of GPU resources as businesses continue to experiment with AI. It's easier to gain access to CPUs. It's less expensive to run models on a CPU infrastructure versus a GPU infrastructure. We've also partnered with GPU hardware manufacturers so that we can get, as an example from NVIDIA, custom tailored GPUs for media and inferencing workloads versus heavier weight large language models. We've also partnered with a company called NetInt so we can provide video processing units at the edge so that we can extend that use case to high speed video processing for some of our media customers as they look at the intersection between media and gaming and AI. Now, beyond that, there's tooling. There's all sorts of uh, developer tools that will want to create models, to train models, to start to test those models with different types of inputs than, than developers are used to with sort of static testing frameworks. And then we're also looking at integrations with existing services and uh, devices so that we can apply the AI uh, to the use case more easily for our customers by providing them basically with a full suite um, of partners that will extend what we deliver first party and really accelerate the route to market because our customers will be able to take advantage of the flavor of software that they're used to or they prefer on an open platform. And that really is the, the cornerstone of our approach in cloud is that we wanna have an open platform that allows our customers to choose the software or the partner that they prefer so that they can architect the best possible solution where optimized differentiation will come in our ability to deliver and execute any of those decisions closer to where their users are, certainly more, more distributed and closer to users than a centralized hyperscaler platform could.